Hi, and welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. I'm your host, Matt, and today we'll be uncovering and benchmarking the new Radeon R9 380X. If you're currently shopping around for a new graphics card for less than $300, your options are pretty limited. Assuming you can't afford or simply don't wish to spend $300 on an R9 390 or GTX 970, then you're limited to $200 options in the R9 380 or GTX 960. That $100 price gap is pretty big and normally we expect to see a $250 option. For example, last generation's R9 280 or GTX 760. To round out 2015, AMD will be releasing another 300 series graphics card today, the Radeon R9 380X, and you guessed it, this is the new $250 candidate. If you checked out our GTX 960 versus R9 380 head-to-head -head comparison where we tested over 20 games, you'll know that AMD currently offer the best $200 graphics card. And that being the case, we expect big things from the 380X. So what's under the hood? Based on the GCN 1.2 architecture, the 380X packs 2048 SPUs, 128 TAUs and 32 ROPs. This is the same core configuration as the 280X and therefore the Radeon HD 7970, both of which use the original GCN 1.0 architecture. A key difference of the 380X when compared to those previous GPUs is the 256-bit wide memory bus, which is also used by the standard 380 and Radeon R9 285 before it. However, unlike the 380, the 380X will come with a 4GB GDDR5 memory based configuration as AMD isn't just targeting 1080p gaming with the 380X, but also 1440p. AMD has slapped the same thermal design power rating of 190 watts on the 380X as they did on the 380 and despite that, we certainly expect the beefier 380X to use quite a bit more power. The default AMD specification calls for a core clock speed of 970MHz and a memory speed of 1425MHz, which provides a data rate of 5.7 gigabits per second. It should be noted that the 256-bit wide memory bus limits the 380X to a memory bandwidth of just 182 gigabytes per second, the same memory bandwidth of the 380 and a far cry from the 384 gigabytes of the R9 390. For testing, we used a mixture of pretty new games, including Fallout 4, Mad Max, The Witcher 3, Batman Arkham Knight, and Battlefield 4. Although Battlefield 4 isn't new, the game is still very demanding and visually impressive. It also serves as an excellent baseline given drivers have had plenty of time to mature and it's commonly used for benchmarking. Initially, we planned to throw in some Call of Duty Black Ops 3 results as well, but due to some performance anomalies between the 380 and 380X, we decided against it. The latest beta driver showed massive performance gains for the 390 and 380X over the standard 380, so there's definitely some funny business going on there. Rather than risk artificially skewing the results, we dropped the test entirely. Batman Arkham Knight is a questionable addition to our battery of benchmarks given the game's troubled history. Still, today it seems to be in a playable state and we certainly didn't run into any issues when benchmarking. Batman features its own built-in benchmark, but it doesn't accurately represent real gameplay. Instead, we use fraps to measure 60 seconds of gameplay while driving the Batmobile around. The in-game quality settings were all maxed out with the exception of the NVIDIA Gameworks settings, which include interactive smoke, interactive paper debris, enhanced rain and enhanced light shafts. The Radeon R9 380X averaged 72 frames per second with a minimum of 59 frames in Batman Arkham Knight, making it 6 frames per second or 9% faster than the 380. That said, it was a whopping 29% slower than the 390, which worked out to be a 29 frame per second gap. To benchmark Battlefield 4, we're using fraps to measure 60 seconds of the opening sequence of the campaign's sixth level, Tashgar. It's a very demanding section as it's fast paced and features plenty of draw distance, numerous lighting effects and shadows, high resolution textures, as well as particle effects from fire and smoke. Anti-aliasing has been set to 2 times MSAA and the HBAO ambient occlusion mode has been used. All other settings have been maxed out. Testing with Battlefield 4, we again find that the 380X is just 8% faster than the 380, while losing to the 390 by a rather substantial 28% margin as it falls short by 25 frames per second. I've only just purchased Mad Max and therefore haven't had time to play through the game to work out where I should benchmark. That being said, for now I'm testing with 60 seconds of the intro cutscene. The game doesn't appear particularly demanding even with the quality settings maxed out. The 380X blitzed Mad Max with 81 FPS, though this meant it was just 8% faster than the 380 and 960 graphics cards, 
while it was again miles behind the 390, losing by a 24% margin. Fallout 4 benchmarking takes place in the small town of Concord, where we use fraps to measure 60 seconds of gameplay. The Ultra preset was used for testing, which means TAA was enabled along with features such as SSAO and God Rays. An average of 68 frames per second meant the 380X was 13% faster than the 380 and 10% faster than the GTX 960. Meanwhile, it only trailed the 390 by a more respectable 14% margin this time around. For testing The Witcher 3, we benchmarked 60 seconds of gameplay in the large town of Novigrad. The maximum in-game quality settings were used, which meant that Nvidia Hairworks was enabled and set to the maximum level. Currently, AMD and Nvidia deliver similar performance with this setting enabled. Here, the 380X was good for 38 frames at 1080p with all of the eye candy turned on. This meant that the 380X was 9% faster than the 380, but crucially 21% slower than the 390. Next, we test the power consumption while playing Battlefield. The 380X's consumption was very high, certainly much higher than we were expecting. It's difficult to compare the efficiency of non-reference cards as voltage profiles are often changed, causing certain graphics cards to consume more power, and this could very well be the case with the Sapphire 380X Nitro OC. Whatever the case, the Sapphire 380X consumes roughly the same amount of power as the HIS R9 390 in Battlefield 4, and considerably more power than HIS 380. Interestingly, the Sapphire R9 285 was also quite power hungry. The power consumption figures in Fallout 4 are quite similar to those seen when looking at Battlefield 4. The standard 380 consumes a bit more power here which helped to reduce the huge margin between the 380X and 380, although overall the story is much the same. With the bulk of the AMD 300 series and Nvidia GeForce 900 series graphics cards having already been released, it's quite clear where the 380X slots in and how good of a job it does. So how good of a job does it do exactly? Well that really depends on the price. Initial estimates suggest an MSRP of $250, though we find that hard to believe given the 380X was on average just 9% faster than the 380 and over 20% slower than the 390. This means the 380X is an incremental upgrade over the 380 and given the performance we've seen, a $220 asking price seems reasonable. The 380X does a fairly poor job of bridging the gap between the 380 and 390, so a $250 price should be out of the question. On paper, the 380X features 25% fewer SPUs than the 390, so it isn't entirely surprising that we found it to be on average 23% slower. Something I found interesting and wanted to share with you guys was how the 380X compared to the almost 4 year old Radeon HD7970, a graphics card that features the same core configuration. The 7970 uses the original GCN 1.0 architecture but features a wider 384 bit memory bus for a 288 gigabyte per second memory bandwidth. Although the 380X features the slightly more efficient GCN 1.2 architecture, its 256 bit memory bus limits the memory bandwidth to just 182 gigabytes per second. As you can see, performance wise, the old 7970 and 380X are rather evenly matched. The only game to show a significant difference in performance is Fallout 4, although we don't believe the 380X is actually 24% faster here. Rather, AMD is yet to optimize the 7970's performance, something they've obviously done in other recently released titles such as Mad Max, Batman Arkham Knight and The Witcher 3. So essentially, if you spent $500 on a 7970 almost 4 years ago, it seems your graphics card is only devalued by 50%. Not a bad investment if you look at it that way. Getting back to the 380X, we'd hoped for more performance, but looking at it realistically, the 380X was never going to be more than 14% faster than the 380. The specifications simply wouldn't allow it. So keeping expectations in check, the Radeon R9 380X is a mild bump up from the 380, offering slightly better performance at 1080p. AMD is hinting at 1440p performance with the 380X, but we feel it's a little too slow for that, leaving the 390 as the best option for the higher resolution. Finally, if you're in the market for a $200 to $250 graphics card right now, we suggest you try and snap up one of the remaining R9 290s. Incredibly, there still seems to be plenty of them out there, and right now Newegg.com is showing stock for a Sapphire R9 290 at $220 after a $20 rebate. Performance-wise, you can expect very similar, if not the same numbers to that of the R9 390, as we've demonstrated in previous videos. Thanks for watching another Hardware Unbox release day review. Did you have high hopes for the 380X? Let us know in the comments or our forum at hardwareunboxed.com. And for more videos like this one, remember to hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.